Hey everybody, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. One of the things I love about the warm weather is all the farmer markets that start to pop up all over the place. I love going to these and prowling through the stalls and picking up local produce and homemade soaps and preserves and just chatting with everybody. And of course, it's really helpful if you bring your own bags. We've had a lot of requests lately to make a market bag. So today we're gonna to make one that's really sturdy and pretty to look at too. Plus, it's a scrap buster. I am still working through my big stash of cotton yarn. So that's what I've used for today's project. And I recommend cotton for a project like this because cotton is pretty sturdy and strong. It wears really well and it's washable too. Some of you might recognize the color patterning in this bag looks a lot like a blanket we did a while ago here on the show. And I'm going to use the same color splicing technique for this project that I used when I made the blanket. This is a two strands held together kind of project. So it makes it A, really pretty to look at, but B, it makes it extra sturdy and strong. If you'd like a written copy of this pattern for your collection, you'll find it in our Etsy shop. And we'll make sure there's a link to our Etsy shop in the description box down below. And while we're at it, we'll add a link to that blanket tutorial too. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn. We'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a happy scrappy market bag together. To make our cotton marketplace bags, I've got about 150 grams all together of leftover medium worsted weight size four cotton scrap yarn. So just tiny little bits of it. I've broken it into two categories. I have all my dark bold colors over here and my lighter brighter colors over here. The whole bag will be made using two strands held together at all times. I'm going to use one strand of light and one strand of dark throughout and I'm going to vary up the colors that as I go so that I get a nice random scrappy look. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using an eight millimeter hook also known as an L11 in the US or a size zero in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. All right, as I said, I'm gonna hold two strands together throughout the entire build of this bag. It's gonna make it sturdier and it's also gonna make it work up a little faster. I'm always gonna use a strand from my light pile and a strand from my dark pile. And as they run out, or maybe as I get tired of that color, I will snip it or let it end and tie in a new color. And I'll show you that process when I get to it. But first, let's start our foundation chain row. Grab your two yarn ends and make a slip knot. To begin, we're going to start with 21 chains. So go ahead and chain 21. Be sure to hold both those strands together Treat them like one big strand of yarn. You should have 21 chains in your foundation chain row. We're gonna skip over the first chain from the hook and remember we're treating both those strands of yarn held together as though they were one strand. So treat them both like they were one strand of yarn. Skip over that first chain, find the second and work three single crochets into that chain. That's three single crochets worked into the second chain from the hook. And into each chain across, you're going to work one single crochet. So single crochet in each chain all the way to the end. I'm not even across my foundation chain row yet and I've already come to the end of my first light strand of yarn. So I'm going to grab another strand of light yarn and I'm just going to literally tie it in. So I'm not doing any fancy joins. I'm just doing, I'm holding both strands together and tying them in together. And I'm leaving a long tail so that when I work over top of it, it will be worked into the body of my fabric. So into the body of the bag and it really won't come undone. So I'm gonna continue crocheting, <laughs> single crochets into each chain all the way to the end of that foundation chain row and now I've already had my first color change. So I'm gonna work right over top of that. Here's my two ends. So 
So I'll complete my single crochet. And now I'm just going to hold the ends against the body of my work. And I'm going to do this throughout the entire build. I'll show it to you again later. But I'm just going to crochet right over top of those little ends and they will disappear into the body of my bag. So if you can't do it all at once, at least get your hook through that stitch you're working and then lay those two ends over top of your hook and single crochet right over top of them. When you get to the end of your foundation chain row and you get to your last chain, work three single crochet into that last chain. And that is going to spin us around so that we are now looking at the underside of our foundation chain row. So there's all the single crochets we worked going one way and now we're going to work across the bottom. There's my two ends from my initial slip knot and I'm just going to work right over top of them. So three single crochet into that last chain and then we're going to work backwards. So you're just going to single crochet into the bottom of each of those chains from the foundation chain row. And they're pretty easy to see because it's just basically you stick your hook in at the very bottom of the underside of those single crochets and there should be a little space there just waiting for your hook. And I'm already at the end of one of my darks. I'm going to have to tie in a new dark yarn here in a minute. Still working over top of that set of ends. All right, I'm going to tie in another dark. This blue looks nice. So I lay, take both of my ends and I hold them together. And I tie a nice simple knot. Leave fairly long ends so that I can work over top of it and they won't unravel. And I keep going. When you get all the way back to the beginning, you should have three single crochets around the corner on either end and 18 single crochets down each side. So 18, 18, 3 and 3. We're not going to join our rows, we're just going to kind of keep working in the round. So when you get back to the beginning, that's that first single crochet we made, you're just going to work directly into it. So no row joining. We're going to work two single crochet into that first of three stitches and it might be a little tight, so just take your time. Two single crochet into the second of those three stitches. And I'm already at the end of another light, so I'm going to have to work in another ball. and two single crochet into the last of those three stitches. Now you're going to single crochet in each of those 18 until you get to the end where those other three little turning stitches are. So one single crochet in each of the next 18 stitches. After you've worked a single crochet into each of those 18 stitches alongside one, work two single crochet into each of those three turning stitches and then work a single crochet into each of the 18 on the other side going back. So a little bit of counting here. Two single crochet into each of those three turning stitches and one single crochet into each of the next 18. Once you've worked a single crochet into those 18 stitches across, you're back at the turn. You should have six turning stitches now and we're going to work the following. Two single crochet into the first of those six turning stitches and one single crochet into the next. Two single crochet into the third of those turning stitches one single crochet into the next. Two single crochet into the 
fifth of those turning stitches and one single crochet into the sixth or last of those turning stitches. And now you're just going to single crochet in each of the next 18 stitches. All right, we're at the six turning stitches on the other end and we're going to repeat the same little pattern. So two single crochet into the first of those six turning stitches, one single crochet into the next, two single crochet into the third of those turning stitches, one single crochet into the next. And one last time, two single crochet into the fifth of those turning stitches, and one single crochet into the last. And now you're going to single crochet in each of those 18 all the way back to the beginning. Because we want a nice wide base in which to place a lot of things, we're going to do one more row of increasing. So we're going to increase around both sides once more before we start working the upper part of our bag. So you should have two, three, six, nine, nine stitches going around the corner of either end. And here's what we do. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch of that set. Here I am working over some more long tails. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And repeat. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Two single crochet into the next stitch. And single crochet into the last two turning stitches. All right, you should have 12 turning stitches now. You're going to work a single crochet in each of the next 18, and then we're going to repeat it on the other end. We've arrived at the next turning corner. You should have nine turning stitches, and we're going to repeat the same thing that we did on the other side. So two single crochet into the first stitch to start. Single crochet once into each of the next two. And repeat. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And one more time. Two single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. That completes the turn. And now you can single crochet in each of the 18 stitches all the way back to the beginning. Alright, that essentially finishes the bottom part of our bag and I absolutely love how this is looking already. It is so pretty. Alright, here comes the easy part. There's no more increasing. All you're going to do is single crochet into every stitch all the way around. Pretty much forever now. <laughs> or until the bag is as tall as you want it to be. So I'm going to just start crocheting into every single stitch. If you are concerned that you are going to lose track on which side is sort of the side you started on and which side is sort of side two, so side one or side two, you can take a minute and just mark the beginning of side one with a safety pin and just leave it there for the duration of the bag. That's only if you're not sure you'll be able to see it, but it really doesn't make a big difference um, because we're just going to so, do so many single crochets that both of the ends of your bag are going to pretty pretty much even when you're finished anyway. So go ahead, work a single crochet into every single stitch all the way around until the bag is as tall as you like, and I will see you several rows from now. Okay, I have crocheted around and around and around and around until when I flatten out my bag, so I flatten it so that the bottom is flat and the top two rows are even, 
my bag measures approximately 15 inches from the top all the way up here all the way down to the bottom so 15 inches or 38 centimeters that's how I know it's deep enough for me you can keep going if you want it to be a little deeper but I think that's deep enough I snipped my yarn I've come all the way back round to around the corner so the edge where all of our increasing was down at the bottom and all I'm going to do is just slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. Both my top edges are more or less aligned and when I open this up, oh my gosh it's so pretty, it's going to sit on a somewhat flat bottom so you can open up your market bag and actually stuff a bunch of stuff in there. I know it's a little dark, difficult to see the bottom, there we go, uh, but it sits on a bit of a flat bottom so that's a nice deep bag. Then you want to grab your uh, yarn needle and you want to weave in your tails back and forth across the inside edge of that last row. Once we have the bag finished we want to make a couple so two different straps and these straps are not too wide so that they're comfortable enough to grab and they're not too too long but they should be long enough that you can slip them over your shoulder if you have to and both ends have a long tail left over because that's what we're going to use to sew our strap to our bag and we want to make sure it's sewn down really really firmly because you don't want those straps to come off so we're going to make these straps using the same two strand technique that we used for the rest of our bag I'm going to grab a couple of colors and before we make our slip knot, we're going to make sure that we've left at least 30 centimeters or 12 inches of tail before we start our slip knot. So there's our nice long tail. Don't get confused with your long tail <laughs> versus the working yarn. And to begin, you're going to chain 41. Once you have 41 chains, we're going to skip over the first chain from the hook, find the second, and single crochet into it. You're going to single crochet in every single chain. Remember to count both those strands together as a single big piece of yarn. You're going to single crochet in each chain all the way back to the beginning, and at the end of row one, you will have 40, that's four zero, single crochets. At the end of row one, you should have 40 single crochets. There's that long tail we started with. We're going to do one more row, so we're going to chain one to turn, turn our work, and we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way back to the other end. You'll still have 40 single crochet at the end of row two. At the end of row two, you should still have 40 stitches. That's it for the strap. Cut yourself a nice long length, about 12 inches or 30 centimeters worth of yarn. Fasten off, and those are your two tails that we're gonna have for sewing. And that's what we're gonna do next. When you're ready to sew on your straps, you're gonna sew them on like this. So one strap goes on one side, the other strap goes on the other side of your bag. The easiest way to make sure that they are equally placed is to flatten your bag out nice and flat and from the very edge stitch on either side count in five stitches and then pin the edge of your strap to the sixth stitch. You're going to sew the bottom of your strap across the sixth, seventh and eighth stitches in from the edge on both sides. So it looks a little something like this. I've sewn it right across the top of those stitches. That gives me a nice sort of space on the inside. Another thing you want to make sure before you sew down your strap is that your strap is flat. There's no twisting. You want it to be nice and flat. Your edges are going to line up facing out across the top of your bag. And once you have one strap on, you can flip your bag over and sew the other one down in a mirror image. So you can take this second strap, make sure that it's not twisted, lay it down flat, and make sure that it lines up across stitches that are pretty much opposite from the other strap. And this is how we're going to sew it down. Grab your yarn needle. You can 
thread up both of those strands left over together, so that long tail, and this is, let's see here, looks like this is the stitch I'm starting in. So that's the stitch I'm going to start sewing in. You bring your yarn tails from the back out to the front. It helps if you work on a flat surface, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to pick it up here. So there's the first stitch across the top of the bag. Here's the first sew um, seam that I'm going to sew across. So you want to make sure you grab a good chunk of the edge. This is the raw edge of the strap we're dealing with. So you want to get a, make sure you're working at least both of those um, threads. You're not splitting the yarn up. So get a good piece of the edge of that strap. And you're going to sew through the same set of spaces and stitches twice. So you're going to do this twice. So sew twice in the same location. Then you're going to move to the next stitch along the edge of the bag. Grab some place in the middle of your strap and sew that in place, same place, twice. Nice and tight. You want to make sure this strap is not going to come undone. Then you move to the third stitch. Make sure you're getting both pieces of yarn. Get a good piece of the edge of that strap and sew through the same place twice. I'm going to do it a third time on the edge here and then I'm going to work my way back. So back to the middle stitch and then the first set we did. So that has been sewn down now three times across each of those three spaces. That should be enough. You're going to separate your two threads now and you're going to grab one, doesn't matter which one, and you're going to run it underneath some of that stitching. So just thread up one. And now you're going to knot both of those tails together. So nice and tight. Once is never enough. At least twice, maybe even three times if your yarn isn't terribly grabby. Then put them back together again and you're just going to weave them in across the underside of your strap. So the stitches across the underside of your strap. You're going to treat them like a single thread again. Weave them back and forth until they are completely woven in. Once you have one side down, you want to do the other side. That's why it helps if you pin it in place. Otherwise, you can just count in your stitches again, or if you're working on side two, you just pair it up, make sure it matches the other strap, and then you just sew it exactly the same way. Make sure you sew through each space twice going first one way and then make sure you sew back through the whole thing at least once going the other way. And that's how you sew on your straps. Make sure you don't twist your strap. If you're unsure, always lay it down on your table and make sure it can lie flat. Once you've got both your straps on, you are done. And now we're all ready to go out and do a little shopping at our local farmer's market. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed making this bag along with me this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week, everybody. Bye!